is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Weird News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Emily Ferrier, here to bring you my favorite weird news stories of the past few days. So starting us off this week, because it is Super Bowl Sunday, um, as of when you're actually listening to this, a celebrity hippo is predicting a Super Bowl win for the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, her vomit is. Zookeepers at the Cincinnati Zoo recently got Fiona the hippo to pick which team would win Sunday's Super Bowl, the Chiefs or the San Francisco 49ers. The keeper set up two enrichment items. One emblazoned with the Chiefs logo, the other with the 49ers to see which one caught her eye. Keepers figured Fiona would simply press her snout to one of the items, but she'd just eaten her lunch. She upchucked some freshly chewed veggies atop the Kansas City logo. Um, although that way Fiona made her prediction certainly unique, uh, the accuracy isn't anything special. New York City Post reports that Fiona's predictions have a 50% accuracy rate. In 2018, she correctly picked the Philadelphia Eagles over the New England Patriots, but incorrectly picked the Los Angeles Rams over the Pats in 2019. Uh, meanwhile, the top dog among psychic animals remains Paul the Psychic Octopus, who in 2010 successfully picked the outcome of eight World Cup games without getting a single prediction wrong. However, this is a fun article pointing out some hilarious Super Bowl prop bets, not suggesting that you should use them. If you do, just remember to bet responsibly. Uh, So that's a weird one, isn't it? Fiona the hippo, the hippo vomiting to make a prediction. Uh, are we sure that the vomiting on it means that they're going to win? Wouldn't the vomit kind of indicate that that they were the team to lose? I don't know. That's just me, maybe. Um, I find the whole world of sports betting fascinating. I actually listened to a whole podcast about specifically sports betting recently, just because I I just think it's like it's just beyond me. I'm not I'm not a better. I'm not a gambler. I I'm not really a sports person. Uh, I still will be watching the game. For sure I'll be watching the game. I enjoy sports, but I don't, I don't actively seek it out. You know, I don't have favorites. I don't have, I don't know a whole lot about it, but it's obviously, it's enjoyable to watch like anything, right? Um, so like talking about sports betting, uh, I wanted to bring you the top 10 funny bets, uh, just for, for, um, this year's Super Bowl, the top 10. Funny bets from the website, uh, from a website that I found online that I thought were very silly. The number one, the total number of Donald Trump tweets on February 2nd on Super Bowl game day. Odds over 13.5 is plus 130, under 13.5, minus 170. Uh, so last Super Bowl, under six tweets. So that's pretty bold to, to bet over, over 13.5. Any, any Trump tweet at all, it doesn't matter if it's related to the game or not. So that's interesting. 
Um, yeah. Interesting. Oh, also, side note, did you know you could block politics altogether from Twitter? You can go to your Twitter settings, content preferences, says muted, muted words, and you can add the words you don't want in your Twitter system. Very interesting. Um, number two, will a player leave the game and not return due to concussion symptoms? Yes, plus 120, no, minus 150. Uh, terrible bet, kind of awful, but probably... A smart one to make. Um, I remember he, he, the author of this writes, I remember hearing someone talk about this. Yeah, I got money on the 49ers, the MVP, the coin toss. Oh, and a $50, $50 on someone drinking their meals through a straw for a week. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. I really hope that that doesn't happen. But anyway. Three. Will any scoring drive take less time than any Debbie Lovato song? Uh, than it takes Debbie Lovato, sorry, to sing the anthem. Yes. Negative one, 260. No, plus 175. Uh, very funny, very silly. Real odds for Demi Lovato singing the anthem. Um, are 1255. But she can really, really stretch it out. So, we'll see how long that actually takes. Love it, love it, love it. Um, this author thinks. It will. Number four, what company airs the first commercial after the coin toss? Bud Light, 15 to 1. Budweiser, 15 to 1. Coke, 19 to 1. Hyundai, 19 to 1. Skittles, 19 to 1. Mars, M&M's, 24 to 1. Kia, 24 to 1. And Field, 2 of 3. Um, yeah. Yeah. What is the best, uh, does it give it an edge to be the first one? That's a, it's a lot of money. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. Okay, uh, which coach will be first mentioned on TV after kick up, kickoff? Odds, Andy Reid, minus 155. Kyle Shannon, plus 115. Um, yeah. I, I I don't know because I don't know either team. Number six, number of women to claim sleeping with Jimmy G during Super Bowl week. Over one, plus 110. Under one, minus 150. Good stuff. Funny, funny, funny. Uh, number seven, what color will Gatorade, will the Gatorade dumped on the head coach be? Odds, orange, plus 400. Clear water, plus 300. Yellow, plus 300. Red plus 150, blue plus one, plus 750, and purple 1800. Very silly. Uh, last year it was blue Gatorade. Does that mean anything? Who knows? Uh, will Troy Eichmann mention his past Super Bowl experiences? Yes, negative 250, no, plus 175. Um, yeah. Yes. Just yes. Nine. Will any player finish with exactly 69 yards? Yes. Plus 69. Ha <laughs> ha. 690. Uh, no. Negative 1290. Very, very silly. That's very funny. Uh, probably, yeah. Probably, yes. Maybe. And number 10. Who will win the Super Bowl MVP? And uh, the the game think first. Odds, teammates three to two, coach twelve to one, family twelve to one, God three to one. Uh owner twelve to one. Does not think anyone five to two. That's very funny. Uh or he could pull a Matthew McConaughey and think himself. Very funny, very funny. Um I think this is a funny betting concept to uh to bet on these things, like betting on the most ridiculous things. Instead of just like the actual stats. I don't know anything about football. I don't know anything about betting, to be honest. So um, I thought these were the funniest ones. Uh, if you have anything else that you think is kind of silly to bet on, please let us know. If you uh, don't like the way I reported on that, please let me know. I genuinely have no idea when it comes to sports and sports stats. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the coronavirus and some weird ideas. Thank <laughs> you. 
Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about betting and stats, um, and I think you could all gather that I know nothing about betting, stats, or football. Uh, so now we're going to talk about another thing that is all across the news and people cannot stop talking about, and that, of course, is the coronavirus scare. So, um, coronavirus, if you don't know, is uh, has been declared a national emergency in America, um, and a few other countries, and it has uh, caused like a huge scare. Specifically, um, we're going to talk about a case in India where um, Hindu Mahasabha has proposed a bizarre treatment for the dreaded virus. Swami um, Shakprini Maharaj, president of Hindu Mahasabha, on Friday said cow urine. And cow dung can be used for treating novel coronavirus diseases. He also said that the special yagna will per, will be performed to kill the novel coronavirus and end its effects on the world. Consuming cow urine and cow dung will stop the effect of this infectious, infectious coronavirus. A person who chants Om Nahama Sibe and applies cow dung on the body will be saved. Special Yagna ritual will be performed to kill the coronavirus, said Shakripani. The World Health Organization um, has declared a new coronavirus outbreak emergency after the death toll in China rose to 213 on Friday, with over 9,600 confirmed cases in the country's 31 provincial level level regions. So, um, I probably wouldn't condone rubbing cow dung on your body. Uh, maybe this is true. Maybe it's not. It seems bizarre to me, but then again, a lot of medical practices used to seem extremely bizarre to us. And I think I'm going to tell you about some of the most bizarre medical practices and theories from the past. So speaking of urine, there used to be one called urine therapy. Um, so yeah, urine, urine being used as a curative in, uh, both the medical and cosmetic world in many cultures and eras, including the Romans, the Renaissance periods, China, India, France, and is still a predominant theory in Western culture to this day used for teeth whitening, skin protection, acne curing, strep throat, and broken bones, to name a few. Sometimes the urine is ingested directly, whilst other times the urine is made into um, into a, a put, putless, I'm not sure what that is, or directly placed on the skin. Um, has a lot of theories medically that have been debunked, but uh, people still do it. People still drink their own pee as well. Children's soothing syrups. Um, if you have a rambunctious child or a child during teething, a soothing syrup is here to relax them. Um, and this soothing syrup is a cocktail that includes morphine, cannabis, heroin, and powdered opium. So basically you're just drugging the kid up. Of course it'll make it calm. You know, 
could also kill them. And then mercury. Next one. Mercury used to be ingested if you weren't feeling well. Um, in the past, Egyptian tombs, dating as far back as 1500 BC, was used to cure ailments, heal wounds, and prolong life. One Chinese emperor was so obsessed with uh, seeking an elixir for eternal life that um, he he used a compound of mercury that he ingested, given by doctors and scientists, and uh, it uh, killed him. So that's ironic. Heroin for coughs. Drug heroin used to be used um, for simple coughs and wheezes. German pharmaceutical company Bayer uh, did it at the end of the 19th century. And some of the 20th century, heroin was used to treat something. um, It should treat a morphine addiction as well. Shortly after, they realized that heroin metabolizes to morphine in the body and uh, just kind of created a faster-acting morphine. Um, electrical impotence cures. Uh, back in the late 19th century, inventors and medical practitioners uh, used to like to peddle their things. One being uh, bringing electricity could bring certain energies into the body. Presumed that it could affect uh, impotence and impotent affected men. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I think it's obvious that that didn't work. Lobotomies. Lobotomies, I think you probably know what that was, where you slice a piece of the brain. Um, you would insert an ice pick tool to the eye eye socket in the prefrontal cortex, and then, um, uh, uh, strike it with a hammer. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I believe, believed at the time that it could, uh, it could cure mental illnesses and uh, it would change you because it would take your personality away. So um, there were several cases of that in history, including John F. Kennedy's sister, Rosemary. She was never the same again. Bloodletting. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it was... Um, Believed that a a blood, like if you released blood, if it didn't circulate well, it would uh, cause stagnation in cer- certain parts of the body causing illness. So they could, you know, release it and um, and that would kind of get rid of the, the gross things like black bile and yellow bile and phlegm. An excess or shortage of these substances would so- result in illness. So the best cure was to let some of it out. Um, another one, tree panning, uh, just, just drill your head, just drill your head like you do with a tree and a spout and hope for the best ear candles, ear candles where you insert, uh, which to get your, your head full clearer of wax, you, you, you light a bit of, like on fire and then, and then get rid of it. Just doesn't work. Um, and then psychic surgery, paranormal surgeries. Um, so the idea is that the surgeon would cut open the patient using his bare hands, tracing one line with his hands, and the wound would disappear painlessly, remove tumors and other gore with his hands. Uh, it's not smart. You know, it's not smart. They really just were faking it, is what it is. Um, so those are some weird medical things that happened back in the day that we we used. So maybe, you know, maybe this is that with the, with the cow dung and such for coronavirus, or maybe he's right. Who knows? When we come back, we're going to talk about... Um, Flatulence being a bug repellent when we return from the break. 
This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA, it's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. the break we are talking about some weird medical stuff weird things that people used to genuinely believe um weird cures for things weird ways to deal with ailments uh now we're going to talk about something that is uh kind of similar it's like a very strange strange thing that was um that was discovered it was two uh, repellent manufacturing companies that have discovered a man whose farts can kill mosquitoes. Yeah, um, I mean, silent but deadly, you know? Maybe there's something to that after all. So this is actually, I mean, there is something to this in that, like, Mosquitoes can be deadly. So this is this is a story from from um, Africa, by the way. This is from Uganda. Um, so, in a way, this is kind of amazing, and I'm going to try and treat this as sensitively as possible. But how silly is this? You know. So mosquitoes are known for causing malaria, the number one cause of death in America. Joe Ramari from Kampala, Uganda, is said to make huge cash from his uniquely deadly farts that kill mosquitoes instantly. Instantly. That is much better than those candles that we put out during a barbecue. The, what are they called again? Um, oh God. Uh... Well, you know what I'm talking about. Citronella. That's it. Citronella candles. You know how everyone says that citronella candles work and you always put them out and you like rub them all over yourself. You rub citronella, everything all over yourself and you still get that horrific biting and such from mosquitoes all the time. Yeah. I guess this guy has uh, citronella farts that are even stronger. The unnamed companies are reportedly paying Joe millions to study his farts. Uh, what a sentence. Getting paid millions of dollars to have your farts studied? That is the dream, is it not? You know, that's, um, that's weird. That's a weird one. That's a weirder thing than, like, selling pictures of your feet online, am I right? Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're studying them so that they can convert them into a mosquito repellent product. According to the report, Joe's good fart can kill all flying insects that are uh, not bigger than mosquitoes within a six meter radius. That makes me worry about what Joe is eating. Is anybody else concerned? Like, what's, what are you consuming that makes your farts that deadly? Like, that's that's pretty grim. Um, I, I like any insect, any insect that's no smaller than okay. That's okay. Yep, that's aggressive. I like it. I like it a lot. It was said that even at a tender age, um, in a village in Uganda, Joe's farts were ap- appreciated to a point where the local chef uh, took him to live with him during malaria seasons to protect the food by covering them with flatulence. The report added that no one who had lived with him ever caught malaria. And Joe himself had no idea what a mosquito bite felt like. 
I eat normal, ordinary food like everyone else, but no insect can lay a foot on me. Not even a fly, he was quoted as saying. Uh, Joe says, I smell like a normal man. I bathe daily. My farts are like everyone else's. They're only dangerous to small insects, especially mosquitoes. Imagine buying a raid with my face on it. Oh, this is such a weird one, isn't it? Turning flatulence into a bug repellent. This, um, this sounds like, uh, like what Pumbaa from The Lion King was destined for, you know? Like if, if anyone could, uh, could make a, a mosquito bug repellent, it would be, it would be Pumbaa. Um, just, just fascinating, isn't it? I really hope that this works, to be honest. You know, if, if this is real, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. What a cool thing to say. Like, yeah, I, um, I actually cured malaria in Africa. I cured everyone in Africa of malaria. I, I've solved the malaria problem completely. That's my claim to fame. Oh, wow, that's incredible. How did you do that? Oh, I, uh, I farted. I farted and they bottled it. And that is how I cured malaria. Um, yeah. Yeah, so... It's good. It's very, very good. Um... I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think this is a, I mean, it's certainly a weird one. It's certainly a weird news story. As far as, as news goes, this is one of the weirder ones that I've seen in, in quite a while. Um, if it works though, amazing. You know, if I, I, as far as I know, it doesn't, it seems to be, you know, backed up and such. So that's, that's pretty, pretty fascinating. Um, let me know in the comments what you think, what you think about this, um, this flatulence bug repellent, whether or not you think it's, um, real, I guess, or, or if you would use it, I'd like to know if you would use it. Would it make you smell like farts? Yeah, I guess it would. I mean, that's not ideal. It's not great on a first date. That's for sure be hard to explain on a first date unless your date was like in the forest or something and you're like, all oh, right, okay, so it's a bug repellent. They wouldn't believe you, would they? They would just think that you you made a you made a stinker yourself. It'd be really convenient though to have in the forest. I is it worth it? Yeah? Is it worth it to to smell like farts if you if you're not getting bitten by mosquitoes? I mean they're annoying, don't get me well, it's it's the malaria thing. That is what it is, isn't it? It's like, it's not like if it was just a mosquito bite, if you were just getting bitten by a mosquito, you probably would have been like, ah, no, nah, it's fine. You know, I, I will move on. I'll live my life without this, without this thing. But, but because of malaria, you know, you don't want to die. Uh, you don't want to die. It's, it's worth smelling like farts. If you're going to save a life, right? Yeah, Sure. Um, so another, another weird thing is gonna, we're gonna be talking about when we come back from the break, we're gonna be talking about, uh, some biodegradable 3D printer things that have been made off of McDonald's waste cooking oils. PhD students at U of T Scarborough have created, um, this uh, this new technique for 3D printing with grease from McDonald's. So we're going to talk about that when we come back from the break. Stay tuned. 
Check out the show built around the women of MMA from the UFC, Invicta FC, Bellator, and one championship. We got the fights covered. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Before the break, we were we were talking about flatulence being used to uh, stop malaria. That's pretty cool. And now we're we're doing a switch. We're headed to Toronto, um, to University of Toronto, where I am from. Little plug. Uh, to a PhD student uh, by the name of Rijushi Biswa who has created some biodegradable plastic butterflies using a 3D printer and resin derived from McDonald's waste from their cooking oil. So the researchers have been, uh, have been turning waste from the deep fryers of the local McDonald's, uh, the McDonald's obviously being the campus one, which is probably the grossest, of cooking oils that you can possibly imagine at a university campus. And they've been making them into biodegradable 3D printing resin. 3D printing resin, I assume, is quite expensive. Um, So very cool that they're able to use old waste. It has significant potential, it says. Cheaper to make. Plastics break down naturally, unlike conventional 3D printing resins. So... You know, double the pleasure, double the fun. The reason plastics are a problem is because nature hasn't evolved to handle human-made chemicals, says Andre Simpson, a professor at U of T Scarborough from the Department of Physical and Environmental Science, who has developed the resin in his lab. Because we're using what is essentially a natural product, in this case fats from cooking oil, Nature can deal with it much better. Absolutely true. Um, we we know how to break that down. Our bodies haven't quite figured out how to break down McDonald's cooking oil yet. Or at least mine hasn't. I don't know about you, but mine has trouble processing it. But hey, all the power to nature for being able to do that for us. Plastic butterfly printed from the researcher's cooking oil. Um, was 100 micrometers and structurally and thermally stable. Simpson became first interested in the idea when he got a 3D printer about three years ago when they were at the height of their popularity. And he noted that the molecules used in the commercial resins were similar to fats found in cooking oils. So he wondered whether one could create this resin using wasted cooking oil. But his only challenge was finding cooking oil from a restaurant's deep fryers to test. Despite contacting several major major national food chains, the only one that responded was McDonald's. Um, the one researched, the researchers used was uh, from a hamburger chain in Scarborough. So Simpson and his team used a straightforward one-step chemical process in the lab using about a liter of the cooking oil to make 420 milliliters of resin. The resin was then used to print a plastic butterfly that um, showed features down to 100 micrometers 
and uh, and it won't crumble or melt above room temperature. So that's pretty cool. We found that McDonald's waste cooking oil has excellent potential. Um, he he says uh, using using cooking oil is a major global environmental problem, whereas commercial and household waste. Um, causes serious environmental issues, including clogged sewage lines. You can build up a fats. Um, Simpsons says that there is a lack of ways to recycle it in high value commodity, such as 3d printing, 3d printing resin. He adds that creating a high value, high value commodity could remove some of the financial barriers with recycling waste cooking oil. Since many restaurants have to pay to dispose of it, it could be mutually beneficial. Um, conventional high resolution resins can cost upwards of $525 per liter because they are derived from fossil fuels and therefore require several steps to produce, to produce. I don't know why I said produce like, well, I mean, we are talking about food. That's probably why all but one of the chemicals used to make the resin in Simpson's lab can be recycled, meaning it could be made for as low as $300 per ton, quite a bit cheaper. Then the plastic alternative also cures solid in the sunlight, opening up the possibility of pouring it as a liquid and forming the structure on the work site. Another key advantage is biodegradability. Researchers found that by burying a 3D printed object made with their resin in the soil, lost 20% of its weight in about two weeks. If you bury it in soil, microbes will start to break down. Because essentially, it is just fat. It's something that microbes actually like to eat, and they do a great job at breaking it down. Um, all of these results of this particular research are published in the journal ACS Sustainable Chemistry and Engineering. Simpson received funding from the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, the Canada Foundation for Innovation, and the Government of Ontario with the Kremble Foundation. Um, this is a very cool idea, this idea of like using cooking oils to create some 3D printing stuff. I personally don't 100% understand 3D printing yet, but if this can both be a cheaper alternative, help recycle uh, the cooking oils, and be a biodegradable option for resin for printing. And it's environmentally and economically, you know, a, a sound idea that could potentially be very beneficial to the, all, all companies involved. So that's, that's great news, I think, right? And, um... Also, obviously, right, gives us an excuse to eat more McDonald's, I think. Yeah, does it? Probably, right? That's good. That's good and exciting. So, yeah, eat more McDonald's because you're helping the environment is, I, I think, the main message here. That's what I took from it for sure. And I hope that that's what you took from it. Um, mm hmm, cool. So that's, uh, so that's a very cool little, little thing the researchers at U of T are doing, um, uh, making a more sustainable, uh, thing for resin for printers. Very exciting research coming out of the University of Toronto. Hopefully, we'll be able to use, um, you know, Wendy's Burgers to build a house next. Who knows, right? When we come back, we're going to go back to the coronavirus. But this time, we're going to talk about the way that China is, um, is trying to keep their residents inside. It's a little bit unconventional. We're going to talk about that when we come back from our break. 
Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back. So uh, before the break, we were talking about using McDonald's to uh, to make some 3D printing stuff. And now we're going to talk about the unconventional way that China is uh, trying to keep their citizens inside in lieu of the coronavirus outbreak that has been um, obviously making headlines all over the place. Uh, as we know, in China, they have been uh, advising that residents in affected areas avoid traveling, contact with others, and staying at home. Um, They're trying to quarantine some places. They've locked off the city of Wuhan. Uh, 11 million people have been locked off to contain the viral disease. Um, However, they do need food, so there's There's issues with that, including uh, trucks being allowed to leave the lockdown cities to collect food um, and wearing face masks. And then and then police are uh, wearing their white protective suits to transfer. Um, And those without passes are being turned back. Schools, cinemas, restaurants are closed. Um, They're supplying the the quarantine towns with inadequate supplies of vegetables, rice, meat, and medical supplies. Um, they're trying to, you know, maintain the place so that there's not an outbreak of panic. But they are, are absolutely trying to keep people inside and, and trying to do their best to, um, you know, to to keep people inside their homes as much as possible to avoid the spread of this. Um, some people have said, uh, since, since, uh, schools have closed down, some people have said for the healthy, it's like what you call a snow day staying inside says a Wuhan university professor for the people that are struggling. The hospitals are under strain. Um, so like it, it, as it, it, it is getting very intense and people have had lockdowns, but, one incentive that China is using to um, keep people inside is um, is a little bit unorthodox, but actually might be the most enticing way, at least to keep some younger boys inside and girls as well. I don't know why. It's obviously, any gender can be interested in this. There's a one thing that can encourage video games fans to stay inside. It's pornography. So a Steam developer is giving away its Razzy flagship type title to the Chinese players. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. In a post entitled, Wuhan, We're Here With You, Mirror developer Kagmi Works says the year has just started. We're all facing challenging situations. Um... To avoid the NCOV, it's better to stay at home. So we gave away 45,000 copies of Mirror to keep you company. Please accept our gift and stay strong. Uh, Players in mainland China can head to a giveaway site to link up their phone numbers to confirm their location inside the affected area. Um, And they... And once they've confirmed, they get a free copy of Mirror to enjoy. Mirror launched in 2018. It was the second best title of the year, according to Steam Reviews. 
So, uh, not, not so bad. Get the details on Steam online, but, uh, you know, link, if you, if you do look online, it will lead you to some, some racy stuff. It's an interesting solution. It's a good idea. You know, people love free porn. We learned that from friends in the 90s, that people will not turn it off if they've got it. Um, I think this is a very good incentive program. Very smart. Uh, and uh, it's nice of them, you know, to give away this free thing to Wuhan citizens. Uh, in all seriousness, though, we we are uh, we are with you there, Wuhan, and um, very very glad that people are trying to help you out. Um, but this is a this is a great little a great little thing that they're doing um, to uh, to keep them uh, in their homes. Uh, one Wuhan citizen says that uh, four of her five family members were quarantined at three different hospitals. Uh, and she has been nervous to, to travel between them because of bus and subway service. She says when she goes out, I wear two layers of masks. I try not to touch anywhere. Keep a distance from others and disinfect with alcohol right after coming home. She says, I feel nervous. Especially when I go somewhere with a lot of people, such as drugstores or supermarkets. Other cities are imposing their own travel controls. Some apartment complexes in Beijing bar anyone but residents from entering. Uh, two villages in the Chinese capital's outskirts say that they have their own barriers to prevent outsiders from inter- entering. Government of Shanghai uh, has been encouraging people to stay home as well, spreading infection. So hopefully this game can spread to those places as well. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna keep people inside, why not keep them entertained, right? I fully support this. I think this is a great initiative. It's very um very unorthodox, but it's a good one. It's uh historically been, you know, the best way to uh to encourage men to stay on the inside and women to stay on the inside is the idea of um you know little uh little adult entertainment, you know? Little bit, little, little hands-on video game adult entertainment. I don't know how I feel about the the idea of these adult entertainment games. Anyway, uh, I mean, it's kind of nice. I guess in a way, it's quite. Um, you feel like you're uh, in control of it, right? You feel like you're in control because you know you're creating a world like any other video game world. Um. A lot of onus on you, though, isn't it? You're creating your own entertainment. You know, it's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, stay inside, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay exploring, I suppose. So that's, that's great. Um... When we return from the break, we're going to be going back to uh, to my little roundup of the most profound shower thoughts on Reddit this week. Um, I hope this is cool with you. I just, I love these. I love these so much, these shower thoughts. I think they're very clever. I think they're very fun and silly. And uh, while they're not always news related... I do think that they are definitely weird. So I hope you are still enjoying them as much as I am. Um, We're going to talk more on shower thoughts when we get back. Thank you for listening to all of the weird stuff. And let's get into some fun, silly shower thoughts.
The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back. When we left off, we were talking about the uh, coronavirus um, and some weird incentives that China has implemented to try and keep its citizens at home. And now, the most profound shower thoughts on Reddit this week. First one, if Star Trek... Like transporter technology were invented, the airline industry would spend billions of dollars to discredit it as unsafe and scary. Probably. As a kid, teenagers seemed so big and scary, because in most TV shows they were actually played by adults in their 20s. Amen. Women, Women's longer average lifespan is partially cancelled out by the longer wait times in, in public restrooms. Absolutely. Okay. I could talk for hours about this. I can't tell you how hard my life has been waiting for public bathrooms. Watching paint dry on a microscopic scale would ironically be very interesting. Definitely true. Definitely true. Watching the chemical change in paint drying, that would be exciting, you know? That's a, that's something that you don't get to see too often. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely watching paint dry up close would be good. Normally you empty your drink from the top, but when you use a straw, you empty it from the bottom. Ooh, that's something I've never thought about before. You go to math class in school so you can unlock different buttons on your calculator. I mean, that's more recent in more recent years. Anybody here use a calculator? Give me a comment if you used a calculator in school or if you didn't, you know. Jet lag must be a real son of a bee in the Star Wars universe. Ooh, excellent point. Or um, have they figured that out in this universe? You know, have they, have they changed that? Uh, judging by how much quality gets buried and forgotten, there's probably hundreds of unpublished novels and unmade movies out there that are even better than the classics we know. I bet that's true, you know? Give me, uh, give me something that's not a three and a half hour movie about an Irishman played by an Italian man. It's quite actually, it's actually quite impossible to run with a backpack without looking like a first grader on the way to school. Oh, I always feel like this. I had to run with a backpack. I used to run to work. And I had to wear a backpack because I had to keep all my things with me. And I did feel like I was running for the bus in public school. I always felt very silly. Uh, It's annoying to feel stuff in your pocket. But it's terrifying to not feel stuff in your pocket. Ooh, so true. Halloween is more about giving than Christmas is. Ooh, that's that's a hot take on Christmas. Since the earth is round, our heads have traveled further than our feet. Huh. Well, according to some people, the earth is not round. I think we've talked about flat earther theories on this before. So many conventions this year. Your brain shows the most impressive example of a machine learning when it generates fake conversations in your sleep for real people in your life. That is very true. And that is how Sophia the robot learns, so that's scary. They'll never tell you how much time you waste as an adult trying to under trying to decide whether or not to keep a cardboard box. 
Uh, if the telephone had been invented after email, we would have thought it was a vast improvement on communication. Yeah. Yeah, I think we would have. You know, we would have been like, oh my god, this is so much faster to just call someone up and chat to them. Um, the fact that people put legs and arms between closing elevators shows a lot of trust in mechanics that make them. Oh, I do, uh, cringe. I do absolutely, uh, cringe when I see people doing that on, on trains and on, on elevators and stuff. It really does make me go like, oh my God, I can't believe you just did that. In almost all sports, gravity is the main opponent. Yeah, for sure. Thanks to dating apps, a lot of flirting is now probably done when pooping. Um, I can honestly say I've not done that. Not like, yeah, no, I, no, I do not, do not do that. Sounds like a lie. I haven't. And I'm now thinking that most people I talk to do. The sound of rain is incredibly calming, but a single tap dripping is a maddening. That was a form of torture. Back in the day, disabling your remaining alarms in the morning is the ultimate trust in yourself. Absolutely true. The nicest and meanest things ever said about you were probably said by family members. Oh, that one made me sad. I don't like to think that. Uh, we could save millions of trees by stop our, by stopping automatically printing out paper receipts. Oh, that's true. We should, we should not do that. You delete a dating app when it actually works. Oh, oh, yeah, there we go. After you've pooped on the toilet and talked to them for a while. You can literally add insults to injury when signing someone else's cast. That one's very good. And that is the final shower thought on Reddit this week. This one's been a good one. It's been a bit of a roller coaster. We've we've talked a lot about coronavirus. Um, we've talked about um, mosquito farts, weird medical ideas. We've talked about puking hippos, predicting the Super Bowl. So, yeah, I hope you guys are having a great Super Bowl Sunday. I hope the hippo right in their predictions is that a hot take for me to say that maybe it is is it i don't know um i hope your team wins there we go that's more that's more down the middle there look at me go look at how fair and diplomatic i am being with that um yeah so this has been a good one for me i hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as i have um, I will be talking to you all very soon. Thank you again for tuning in. So thank you for listening to the Weird News Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I would like to ask that you please, please remember to subscribe to the show and write a nice review um, and rate the episode. Rate it five stars. Rate it five stars. It really helps us. It, it brings us up in the ranks. It's important, guys. Please do it. Also, please follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can also follow me on those things if you would like to. Um, yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Continue to tune in. Look at our other podcasts, uh, a lot of which we mention in the commercial breaks. There's a lot, a lot, a lot up there. Go to the GSMC Podcast Network website. See what you like. If you like pets, sports, if you like news, keep listening. I do another news pod uh, called America Still Beautiful. Take a look and listen, and I'll talk to you next time. <laughs>